In this episode, we're going to mix salted collodion, and uh, this is the uh, set of materials that we're going to need. Uh, on the right-hand side, we have a small beaker of distilled water, and that's uh, basically enough to dissolve the, uh, the two powdered solids. Uh, next is the cadmium bromide, and then we have potassium iodide, and then we have plain collodion, ethyl ether, and then ethyl alcohol. And on the end, I have a beaker that uh, we're going to be using for mixing the chemistry. The other equipment is a digital scale, a couple of uh, glass rods for stirring and breaking up the uh, cadmium bromide, and then a small syringe for measuring out the water. Uh, we only need small quantities of that. The recipe that we'll be using is collodion, which is plain USP collodion, 120 milliliters, ethyl alcohol, 75 milliliters, ethyl ether, 75 milliliters, cadmium bromide, 1.5 grams, dissolved in 2 milliliters of water, and potassium iodide, 2 grams, dissolved in 2 milliliters of water. So we're only using enough water just to dissolve the powders. Um, too much water in the collodion will, uh, will cause problems later on. The alcohol we're using is grain alcohol. It's 90%, which is 180 proof. And you want to make sure that this is grain alcohol. You don't want to use isopropyl. That's not the same kind of alcohol. And denatured alcohol has uh, additional chemicals added to it, those chemicals, we don't know what they are, so we don't want to introduce them into, uh, into our collodion. It, it's possible that it could cause trouble for us later on. All right, to begin, what we'll do is uh, measure out the, uh, the powders, the cadmium bromide and the potassium iodide, and then dissolve them in water. To weigh them, I'm first going to put a piece of waxed paper on the balance pan and when we turn that on, it should zero, which says it, uh, it's accounted for the weight of the uh, waxed paper. Before we get started with the cadmium bromide, we want to uh, make sure that we've got some rubber gloves or nitrile gloves. And uh, you want to wear these because cadmium bromide is a heavy metal and uh, it will accumulate in fatty tissues over time. So even minute exposures multiple times can be hazardous. So you just want to make sure that you stay clean, wash up afterwards, don't have food around while you're mixing chemistry, and um, you know don't smoke and things like that where you might transfer the chemical from your hands to your mouth. Also don't breathe the dust if it's finely powdered. Now this cadmium bromide is in a powder form and we're looking for 1.5 grams so we'll scoop a little bit out with our spatula and place it on our pan balance our digital scale that's 0 0.9 1.3 1.4, we just need a little bit more. There we go, 1.5. And we'll seal up our bag again, put it back in the container, and replace the lid so we don't contaminate it or have it contaminate anything else. Now, we need to transfer that into our little beaker and then I'm going to fold up the wax paper so it doesn't blow around and contaminate anything else and then we'll discard that. Now to the cadmium bromide we want to add two milliliters of water so I'm going to use a syringe and draw up two milliliters. Now 
the cadmium bromide is going to cake up when it gets wet. So what I'm going to do is try and distribute that a little bit more around the bottom. And um, I want to keep it moving while I put the water in. And that will prevent it from caking quite as much. So we want to stir this until all of that cadmium bromide is dissolved. We don't want to have little crystals and chunks because that just won't go into solution later when we uh, put it into the collodion. So it's worth taking a little time here and just crunching it. Next on the list is potassium iodide. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with bromide. We'll put a piece of wax paper on the scale, start it up, and it should read zero. Now the potassium iodide is um, a larger crystal. It's, uh, it's not powdered, and it tends to clump up. So you may find that you have these large chunks of potassium iodide. You'll need to break those up before you use them. So with the potassium iodide, we're looking for 2 grams. So we'll put a little on the pan balance and see where we land. Ha! That is 2.08. So let's take a little bit off. That's 2 grams. Cap the bottle again. And then as before, we'll transfer that to the small beaker. And then fold up the wax paper and discard that so we don't have contamination issues. Again, we're going to need to draw in two milliliters of water into the syringe. And again, this is distilled water. Don't use tap water. Now we're going to add that to the potassium iodide. And then stir that until it is dissolved. Again, we don't want to have crystals left behind. Now the potassium iodide is the component that's mostly responsible for the sensitivity of the film. Its characteristic is it's sensitive to the ultraviolet end of the visible of the spectrum. And um, it, that's the thing that gives collodion its interesting, uh, interesting tonal range. Um, it takes a little getting used to when you first start shooting. Colors that would represent in ordinary panchromatic film don't quite show up the same way in collodion. And we'll talk about that later. Alright, so those are the two salts that we're going to be using. Now we're going to mix up the, the substrate, and that's essentially um, cellulose nitrate. And this cellulose nitrate is a solid that is dissolved in ether and alcohol. And it's provided as plain collodion. Now that's a very thick honey-like liquid. And uh, it has a very characteristic smell which is the ether that you'll be uh, be noticing. Uh, when you open this, you want to make sure that uh, you have ventilation in the room. Don't mix this in a closed, small space. Uh, you don't want to have any open flame or any other ignition source around because the uh, fumes of collodion are uh, quite flammable and uh, can be explosive. Now, the uh, amount of collodion that we want to pour out is 120 milliliters. So we'll pour that into the beaker. And it's a little like pouring Cairo syrup. So that is plain collodion. It's colorless and sticky. Now, it's thick at this stage, so we need to thin it. And we're going to thin it with a combination of equal parts ether and ethyl alcohol. Now, ether 
and alcohol will give the collodion film different characteristics, different physical properties. The ether will make your film tough and smooth. If you're heavy on that on that ether side, uh, your film is, is going to have those characteristics. If you're heavy on the alcohol side, if you use a greater percentage of alcohol, then that will produce a collodion film that is more porous and weaker. It's more fragile, more likely to be damaged during processing and handling. And um, But it will stick to glass much better. So if you're shooting on glass and you find that you're having trouble with your collodion lifting off, then you may want to add more alcohol to the collodion to give it these properties of being porous and better you know, sticking. Um, now, let's, uh, let's just measure that out. Ether also is very flammable. You don't want to use that around ignition sources. Also, you want to have plenty of ventilation. And we're going to pour out 75. milliliters of ether. And then alcohol is the next component. And again, 75 milliliters is what we need.